Some of the questions scientists are trying to answer during the current COVID-19 crisis relate to immunity. How long does it take for someone to develop some level of immunity? How long does it last? And if someone is infected once, can they be reinfected again? Hello and welcome. These are important questions but very difficult to answer. And one of the ways people are trying to figure this out is by measuring the amount of antibody present in, a, in somebody's sample or system over a period of time. Up until now, FDA has authorized many different types of antibody tests, but they were all qualitative tests. Yes, no. Do I have antibodies or not? They were not authorized to actually quantify the level of antibody in the system. Good news. Just last week, they authorized one test for what they call semi-quantitative detection of IgG antibodies. So this will allow us to develop a model by characterizing the level of antibody over time in somebody's system. So I'm going to talk about that in this particular video and go over some of the very important data that they have provided in their paperwork filed with the FDA. So let's look into this. Just as a recap, so far FDA has authorized 194 tests. 159 of them are RT-PCR tests. And these are also called molecular diagnostic tests. 33 are antibody tests and two are antigen tests. This particular test is coming from Siemens and it is authorized for two of their systems, Advia Centaur XPXPT and Italica IM. Now they are fairly similar in nature. So I'm going to focus only on the Advia Centaur system in this particular video. Indications are for qualitative and semi-quantitative detection of IgG antibodies to SARS-CoV-2. Now, as a reminder, IgG antibodies develop later in the life cycle of infection and they last longer, unlike the IgM antibodies, which develop earlier. So this test, test is designed to measure IgG antibodies. Technique is two-step chemiluminescent immunoassay. Very well-known technique and it works very well. Samples are serum and plasma samples separated from the blood. Measurement interval is 0.5 to 20 index. So let me explain that a little bit. Index means the intensity is normalized by a calibration standard intensity. So now you have normalized units and you can standardize the data and create a quantitative measure for which relates to the amount of antibody present in the sample. Extended range is 20 to 160 because they have tested it with 1 to 8 dilution. So let's say you have a level of antibody that is giving you a signal more than 20. Now this range is characterized only for 0.5 to 20. So you can dilute it and bring it down to within the range. So effectively your extended range is 20 to 160. Throughput is very high up to 240 tests per hour. And authorized labs are clear, moderate to high complexity labs. Let's look at some of their seroconversion sensitivity results. This is the most important piece of data in the whole package. Sample set is 129 samples from 29 subjects tested positive with RT-PCR and eight panels had three or more draws. So they present results from these eight panels. So what they did was that they had 29 patients and they took blood samples over a period of time. So they had multiple samples from each patient. So they characterize these eight panels. Let's look at the first four, A, B, C, and D. The red dot represents in insignificant amount of IgG. It's below their threshold and they call it non-reactive. The green dots are the antibody levels measured by index. And on the x-axis, we are showing the days past PCR positive. So as you can see, in the early phase, there is hardly any level of antibody present. But very soon, you begin to get a signal. In some cases, it happens fast. For example, panel D, where in less than 10 days, or even panel C, in less than 10 days, you reach a pretty high level, about uh, 7.5 or 5 on index. Panel A and B are taking slightly longer, but panel A has the highest level of antibody. So it is highly variable, but it can be characterized and measured for each particular patient. Now let's look at the next four. And here, I want to draw your attention to panel F where the second green dot actually is lower than the first green dot. And that shows that the level of antibody can decrease over time. And this can capture that. 
Now look, let's look at the clinical agreement data, which basically uh, means how good is the agreement between this test and another particular, another test like RT-PCR. So their sample set was 189 samples from 89 subjects who tested positive with RT-PCR. So 100% positive agreement would mean that all of these positive samples also show presence of antibodies. And as you can see, uh, in the early phase of the infection, let's say under six days, the positive agreement is not very high. And as I had mentioned, the IgG takes a little bit longer to develop. But 14 days or later, the positive agreement is actually quite high. 1831 samples were used for negative agreement and negative agreement is close to 100%. Interestingly, they also had some, some samples coming from pregnant women. So they characterize those samples and the negative ag agreement is pretty high. So this is a great step forward because now we have a tool that can help us measure and quantify the level of antibody present and see how it changes over time. Sometimes it can go up quickly, sometimes it can come down. And then we can correlate that with the medical history of a particular patient and how it evolves. So if we see a patient developing some level of immunity, we can figure out what is the level of antibody present in their system that might correlate with that. And every patient would be unique. But over time, there would be some studies done that can help us develop an idea about the minimum level required for immunity. So a lot to come, a lot more data is expected in future, but certainly it is a step in the right direction. So as you can see, many, many things are happening on a weekly basis. New tests are coming out, new technology is being developed. Exciting time to be in, but very hard to keep up and keep track of everything that is going on right now. And one good way of doing that is by subscribing to my YouTube channel or following me on LinkedIn, because almost on a weekly basis, I'm bringing you these video updates which give you an overview of the most important things happening around us and i'll show you how you can go to my youtube video you can look up exceed naveen agarwal phd and my youtube channel will come up i have more than 30 different videos now on many different topics related to covid 19. so check them out take a look and subscribe to the channel and share with your friends who might be interested in it i want to hear from you let me know what kind of questions or topics you have in mind that you would like me to research and make another video. I'll be very happy to do that. Follow me on LinkedIn. Whenever I post, I give you a link. You can leave a comment there to let me know what's on your mind. I really want to thank you for your continued support and attention. And I hope all of you are staying safe during these very difficult circumstances.